I don't always rewrite Redux, but when I do, I just write another Redux. Hi, I'm Martin, and welcome to Turtle JavaScript. Let's talk about global state management in React using React hooks. To skip to any section that interests you, you can find the time markers in the description. I have also linked in the description the text version of this video. You will find there all the code and resources that you may need. If you are developing React application, the most simple way of managing your global state and access to your backend is through React hooks. Even though there have been a lot of articles talking about hooks since they were released in React 16.8, it is actually quite hard to find a guide that explains well how to leverage them to architecture your application. I will give you the best scalable approach to manage sharing data across your application and working with your backend APIs through React hooks that I am using in all my React apps. If you are already familiar with Redux, then my solution should feel very similar, with just small differences. We will develop simple middleware for global scope and we will manage all the API calls with Axios. We want React components in our application to be able to trigger actions such as updating data. And we also want them to be able to react to the results of these actions or any other change to the global state. We will achieve this goal by using context hook, which will make our components look like this. Notice that we are loading state and actions from the store context. This way we have access to all of our state and actions globally. And we are following the separation of concerns principle because data store, data manipulation, and data representation are all handled separately. If any action triggers an update to the global state, all components will immediately know without you having to add any additional logic. To make it more fun, we will also build a full application deployable to Netlify. You can see the final product working here on quotesmeetmartin.com. It is a simple app that has a list of quotes from famous people and uses global state management to receive and display a random combination of a quote and background color. And it has some quotes even from Walt Disney. And no better website would ever have quotes from Walt Disney. So it must be quite amazing. You can find the full GitHub repository here on GitHub. Once you finish this article, you can take it upon yourself to find out how to add more quotes by creating a pull request on GitHub and adding them to the website. Without using a system for global state management, your application will soon have issues to scale. If your components would like to pass information to other components, you will need to find your own way to architecture it. Without separation of concerns, your components will be directly reaching to APIs in a way similar to this. This approach limits the reusability of the component because it is tied to a specific way of obtaining its data. You also won't be able to reuse the way of obtaining the data without copy-pasting the code into other components or you will need to find some other way of sharing the same data with other components that need it. Only an evil software architect would make you create a code like that. This is the architecture for global scope management, which should already feel familiar if you have ever worked with Redux. As you can see in the first example, React components have the access to the global state from the store, which is shared among all components and pages. When you trigger an action in your component, it will go through a middleware that passes it to the reducer and at the same time triggers a hook that can execute a call to some external API. Reducers then take care of updating the store and all the updates to the state are immediately propagated to all components. This architecture will lead to file structure of a store directory like this. Here is a store for the global scope management. 
here are effects, here you put all your API calls. In the hooks, you put logic that processes API call results. In actions, you put actions that are shared with your components. Middleware is where you decide where you want to call your API. Reducers is where you process the changes to the store, global state. Store context is how you provide the state and actions to your components. And types is where you define your types, which tie together the actions and reducers. Isn't it beautiful? So many files and code for us to dissect. The intention is that you can actually use these files as a template in all your applications. I describe them here so you know what they do, how they work, and where to insert your own creative code to make everything work gloriously together. Our actions and middleware update the store by dispatching types and data. Types are the connection between them and the reducer that updates the store. Every data manipulation that we want to do needs to have a defined type. This is the first file that you usually edit when you want to expand your application by adding more actions. In our application, we just have two types, request random quote and receive random quote. Request random quote is how our application will let the middleware know that it should contact the API to get a new random quote. Receive random quote is how our middleware will let the reducer know that it has a new quote and it wants to update the global store. We use this approach because it helps us avoid typos when we are tying actions and reducers together. Deciding on a good naming convention for your types is also quite important. In simple applications, I usually use request receive. And in more complex apps, I use CRUD. Create, read, read all, update, delete. Actions are how your components will trigger changes and pass data to middleware and reducer. Our application will need only one action, request random quote which has a name that creates a clear connection to the type request random code. Our homepage will trigger that action to let middleware know that it wants a new random code. Without any pileout, we can use this action later by simply calling this. If we wanted to pass some data, we could also implement additional action that would allow us to call something like this. which you create just by doing this. We mainly create actions as an abstraction so that components don't need to work directly with the dispatch calls. The reducer uses the type that we have defined earlier within a switch in order to update the state. You will find that the reducers are actually quite simple to work with. Trust me. I'm an engineer. The constant initial state has the starting state of our application. We use debug so that in our application you can see every time that the reducer is reached. This is enabled even in our live application. So you can go there and have a look for yourself at quotesme-martin.com. You can see that the reducer was just updated. Reducer is reached every time no matter what action you take within the middleware. Because of the default on the switch, we don't have to always update the state if we intend to only trigger the middleware. That is why we change the state on the receive random code, but we don't take any action on the request random code, which is missing in the switch. We are also in the realm of functional programming. And so you can notice that our switch always returns a value instead of editing the original. As soon as a new state is returned, all components that read any of the changed values are informed of the change in the state. Magic. Every code gets always much better when you add a bit of that functional programming magic. Middleware catches every action triggered within the component and similarly to the reducers, it uses the type of the action to trigger its own hooks that can contact your backend APIs. 
To implement middleware, we will start using the functional programming library Turtle Lambda. In functional programming, working with external APIs is considered a side effect, and we will use monads to take care of these side effects, while keeping your functions pure. Don't worry if you don't understand monads, or if you are not too familiar with functional programming. The code will be so simple that you will be able to use it either way, or replace it with your own imperative solution. This is where the real fun begins. We will show what a real request to Netlify would look like in a moment. Now we will just write a simple code that will simulate a situation of doing a server request, but in fact we will just be asynchronous by using a timeout to delay by one second. So this is the mock effect file. This is where I'm getting my quotes from. This is how I'm getting a random quote. That's a standard function. Here are the comments for it. This is request quote function, which uses async effect and returns maybe. And here you can see the timeout by one second. Maybe is a monad, which maybe holds the result of a random quote. In our scenario, this could be a request to a Netlify function. Netlify functions are a simplified AWS Lambda that handles server backend. So this is our final code. You can see that I added long comments with examples, but the code itself is super short. Our get quote from Netlify is a functional partial application of the general post to function. Post to function again returns async effect holding maybe of result data. We will see how these are used when we move to the quote hook that provides the logic with working with our effects. The important thing to remember about these two monads is that async effect is similar to JavaScript promise, but it is not evaluated until you call its method trigger. And so as part of post to function, there is no server code actually executed yet, which keeps our function pure. Maybe as a monad, used when you cannot be sure that you have actually received a value. Maybe says that it maybe has a value, is just, or it doesn't have a value, is nothing. This allows us a quite a robust and easy way of dealing with possible error states and issues. If you are using Netlify functions, you can easily create your own effect by calling post to function as well. This would be the general way of just extending call to function to create your own function for any path on Netlify. If you want to understand monads more, you can just go to turtle.com. In a learn section, you find an article about managing side effects. You can jump directly to maybe there is a value, which describes the monad maybe, or my master lazy asynchronous async effect which talks about async effect. You can also go directly to documentation and search for any of the monads. The next step is to create a hook that will call and process our effect. The same code will work with either of the approaches using a mock or Netlify function. This is our hook that we will be using in the middleware. Get quote gets dispatch and action. Action containing the data that we are passing from our action called in a component. It uses the request quote or get quote from Netlify that we have just defined earlier. It triggers the async effect itself and our error it logs the error or on success it uses the magic of functional programming to process the maybe monad. If the maybe monad is nothing, requesting quote to return invalid data, we just log that. And if there is a success and maybe has a data, we use that to dispatch a new, new action which is passed towards the reducer. Because we are using async effect on the logger error, it automatically takes care for us also of 400 or 500 errors. No additional logic is needed here. If you wanted, you could also notify the global state of the error and use dispatch instead of console error in your code.
The actual middle verifier is similar to our reducer. It uses a switch that checks the called type, and based on that, it calls a hook that we have declared earlier. The middleware is always called for every action, but not dispatch. And if you don't need to call any hook, you can just ignore the type and it will continue happily to the reducer. As you can see, here we are using the request random quote, which we are not using in the reducer in our code logic. And I have again added a logger so you can see the output within the live application. The last file that we need to create is store-context.js, which provides our global state management to our application. This is a file that you don't really need to edit at any point. Just leave it as it is and copy it into your application. The only thing that you should note is the logger here that again logs everything into the console so we know how state updates. That is it for our application. Now you just need to add your store context to app.js. This is my app.js. I'm simply importing store provider in here and I'm adding him at the top at here. In my application, I just have a home page, but in a more complex application, home page would instead be a router. That's all the magic there is to it. Our single page application uses home page for reading the current quote and calls request random quote action in 10 second interval to refresh the quote. This is an example of how can you read state and call actions within your components. You need to add this line to your component to give it access to the global state management. Again using the store context. I usually use pages as simple controllers that abstract reading data from their presentation in components. Therefore, quote component takes care of displaying the quotes, but it doesn't know where the data are coming from or that they are coming from global state. Use effect react hook is used to run set interval at the beginning when the home page is first loaded. It simply calls request random quote, and the result of it is processed by our reducer. State updates automatically, and so we don't need to add any other logic for updating quote component. To show that your components can execute additional changes based on a change in the global state, I have added the wallpaper component that changes the background to a random color every time that the quote changes. This is the final background component. Regstar components are used by me to create the actual background diff. We leverage use effect react hook that watches state quote to change the color. The current background color is then saved in the local state by use state react hook, which demonstrates how you can cleverly combine both local and global state together. That is pretty much all that you need to do to make the whole application work. Now imagine how everyone will be impressed when you show them what you can do in React with the power of React hooks. Global state management and functional programming will be a piece of cake. <laughs> If anything doesn't work, have a look at the full project GitHub repository that is linked in the description of the video. And if that doesn't work, then the issue is somewhere between your keyboard and your chair. But feel free to leave a comment and I'm happy to do what I can to help you or guide you forward. Also please let me know in the comments how this solution works for you, if your colleagues like it or love it, or if there is anything that you would improve. Have a nice day and see you with the next video. Thank <laughs> you.